Okay, so welcome for 11 to another week's um, tutorial on reversible reaction. So can you just do a quick recall? What is a reversible reaction? And um, what is the meaning of dynamic equilibrium? Okay, dynamic equilibrium, as you recall, is when the forward and the rate of forward and backward reaction is the same, and that will cause the amount of reactants and products to say, stay at the same value. Okay, so let's see filling in the table, draw the concentration against time graph. Okay, you know actually this is the second time I'm recording this video, because the first time I recorded it was with the swimming pool sound. Okay, so I'm just using out another half an hour of my life to record this video. Okay, so I hope you appreciate it. Okay, so pay attention. Huh? Okay, let's look at this um, example. Okay, I forgot to give you this value. It's actually starting from zero. So, um, sometimes they'll give you the initial concentration, initial amount, initial partial pressure, or initial volume of the reactants or products. So then they will tell you what is the final concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so at equilibrium, you notice that for carbon monoxide, there is a decrease in uh, 0 0.3 uh, mole per dm cube. Okay, so if on the reactant side there's a decrease of 0 0.3 and the reactant is to product is a 1 is to 1 ratio. What should be happening at the product stage? You think about it. Okay, because over at the reactant, there's a decrease in 0 0.3. So at the products, there must be an opposite in the sign, right? So I must have gained 0 0.30 mole per dmq as well. Okay. So the problem with recording at school is that you'll hear construction noises. Okay, it's either this, a Malay wedding, or swimming pool sound. So I thought I thought that this was the best. Okay, next. Um, if you look at carbon monoxide is to H2, the ratio is 1 is to 2. Now they are on the same side of the equation, which means that um, if there's a decrease in your carbon monoxide, there should also be a corresponding decrease in your H2 gas as they are being used out to form more CH3OH. So um, if there's a decrease in negative, uh, negative 0 0.3 for CO, if it's a 1 is to 2 ratio, it should be decreasing by 0 0.60 as well. So 1 minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.40. Okay, so let's look at how I can draw a concentration against time graph for this. Okay, let me just mark out all the relevant values. So I have 1, then I have, uh, let's say this is 5, huh? so 7 should be 0 0.7. Okay, 4 should be here, 0 0.4, and 3 should be here, 0 0.3. Roughly that, huh? Okay, so for the first one, um, for carbon monoxide, I started out at 1 and I ended at 0 0.7. So just draw a dotted line across using a ruler. Okay, then draw a curved line down to meet at a point. Okay, and it should plateau out. Okay, remember this plateauing shows that the rate of reaction did not change. It's uh, staying at constant rate. So the concentration didn't change. Let's look at this. Um, this is CO. Just label the graph. Now, at which point did equilibrium, uh, was equilibrium achieved? Should be around here. Okay, just look at your own um, graph. At which point did the graph touch the dotted line? Okay, then next. Um, all the reactants and all the products should reach equilibrium at the same point in time. Okay. It makes sense, right? Equilibrium is achieved when rate of forward equals to backwards reaction. So anytime equilibrium is achieved by one, it is achieved by all. Okay. Uh, next, I have H2. I started with one, ended at four. Okay, 0 0.4. Draw another dotted line. 
Now curve line. Now aim to plateau at that exact spot. Okay. Here's my H2. Yeah, next, okay. I have my CH3OH started at 0, ended at 0 0.3. Okay, so this is how you draw the concentration time graph. Okay, it's not very nice here, but I'm drawing it freehand. Okay, you have a ruler. So, uh, can you try doing the same for all the other the three other uh, tables as given? Draw the specific graph for each table. Okay, pause the video and draw it now. Okay, ready? So here are the values. Uh, here's the table. Okay, let's try and see if your values are correct. Now let's uh, again separate the reactants from the product. From here to here, there is a decrease in 0 0.8 mole. So therefore, it is a 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio, very simple. Here, there will be an increase in 0 0.8, and this will also increase by 0 0.8. Okay, so I have 1.8 and 0 0.8. Now you may wonder, why is it that I have some ammonia where I started out? Okay, this is actually based on what is the given re reactance and condition. Okay, so it could be that in the re reaction vessel, there was already some ammonia, but you just um, suck away all the, I don't know, hydrogen core, I guess. It could be. So this is just to alert to you that um, not every time that the products must start from zero. It could be that there are some products already there, but um, they're just trying to like add more. And then, so there's a shift in the equilibrium. Okay, so first write the axis. This is... Um, amount per mole okay this is time per second okay you don't know is it per second or, or per minute but you know it's time la. so if you write minute there's also no penalty okay so let's just start at 2 okay then I have 1 then I have 1.2 And I have 1.8 and I have 8 okay so I started at 2 ended with 1.2 so draw a dot yeah I think actually my drawing skill is quite good already drawing it freehand you know without ruler Okay, so this is at the, at the point in time where equilibrium was reached. Now let's look at ammonia. From 1, it increased to 1.8. So I started with 1. And I'll end with 1.8. So let me just... Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Start with 1, end with 1.8. Okay, so this is your ammonia. And now let's look at your HCL. Started with 0, ended at one point, uh, 0 0.8. Perfect. Okay, so this is roughly how it should look like for you. Now let's look at the other side. Now what is partial pressure? Partial pressure is actually the pressure that a particular gas will exert. Okay, so um, the total pressure uh, is a combination of the partial pressures of each individual uh, gas. So let's look at this. The partial pressure for nitrogen is 0 0.2, 0 point, and for hydrogen is 0 0.2, ammonia 1.5. So from here to here, there is an increase in 0 0.5. So being on the same side of the equation, Hydrogen should be increased as well, but it's 1 is to 3, so I should increase by 1.5. So I'll end up with 170. Here on the right-hand side, from 1.5, I should decrease by twice of 0 0.5, so decrease by 1. 
so I'll end with uh, 0 0.50 okay let's try drawing this um, this time is partial pressure okay partial pressure um, the highest is what 1.7 Okay, say that this is uh, 1.5 and this is 1 and this one should be 0 0.7 0 0.2 okay roughly lah huh? okay so um, nitrogen from 0 0.2 increase to 0 0.7 increase to 0 0.7 increase and two. Okay, say I wish to go around here. Okay, then uh, hydrogen start from zero point two to zero point seven. Oh, this is hard to draw. Okay. Okay, not nice. Ah, yeah. Okay. You can tell lah. Okay, you get what I mean. Okay, so this H two. So draw with a pencil, draw with pencil. Um, then for ammonia, I started at 1.5 and at 0 0.5. Oh, I didn't draw 0 0.5. So this should be 0 0.5, roughly. So... This will be my NH3. Okay, so this will really look like this. Now look that there's no uh, fixed rule as to where or if they should the reactants and products should cross each other. Okay, there's no fixed rule. Uh, look over here. Here it crossed one, but the other didn't cross. Here it crossed twice, and over here they didn't cross at all. So it's totally dependent on what is the equilibrium position and what are the reactants and products. Okay, so let's look at here. The final and the more challenging one because there's this time there's a four things for us to draw. Okay, so for uh, chloride from 1.60, there's a decrease of 1.20. Okay, know that this is a four, so it's like one unit is like 0 0.3. Okay, so if this is one is to is to four, let's look over here, one is to four, then if there's a decrease in 1.2 there, then here there should also be a decrease but in one quarter time. So minus 0 0.30. So 0 0.70. On the right hand side, um, I know that this is 4 is to 2, which is 1, uh, 2 is to 1. So if there's a negative, uh, there's a decrease in 1.2 here, here I should increase by 0 0.6. Now over here for water, because water is a solvent, right? So usually it is present in huge quantities. Okay, I already simplified already. I already reduced the amount of water. But actually, yeah, whatever. Okay, so you get what I'm trying to say. But because water is a solvent, because uh, that's, that's why it's present in large amount. Okay, so 4 is to 6. So uh, 1.20 divided by 4 times 6. Divided by 2, 6 times 3, 1.8. So I need to plus 1.8, 5.80. Okay, so let's try drawing this. Uh, okay, it's amount. And here I have um, time. Okay, let's start from the largest, 5.8. Okay, if that's 5.8, 4 should be around, uh, around here. Okay, let's say that this is around 1, 1.6 should be here, 1.7 should be in here, or 0 0.7, and 0 0.4. Okay, so I think we have um, the major values, oh no, I have 0 0.6, no, no space. Okay, so let's start with water easiest. Huh? So from 4 to 
Okay, then for the uh, this water. For COH two O six, let me find started at one and at zero point seven. Oh, this is uh, very hard to draw. Okay, so this teach you to choose your examples more wisely. Okay, it's very hard. Uh. I think I drew it better like in the swimming pool video. Okay, anyway, then for my car, right, I started at 1.6, I ended at 0 0.4. Okay, this is more manageable. Start here. Let's try more gently. Okay, yes, good job, me. Okay, this is all my car, right? Last one. 0 to 6. Let me use another color. Can't differentiate it anymore. Okay, use another color. So, um, start at 0 and at 0 0.6. So, this will be my CO, CL for 2 minus. Okay, you can see that it's quite challenging to draw here. Yeah? Uh, not easy. <sighs> Okay, so we are done with this example. Can you go and try? Uh, can you try the to fill in all the examples uh, that's in your page four of the notes? Okay, and I'll upload the answer for you to check yourself. Okay, so here let's have some true or false questions. True or false? No reaction occurs at equilibrium. Okay, the answer is false. At equilibrium. There are still collisions that are uh, resulting in chemical changes in either the forward or the backward direction. But because the rate of forward and backward reaction is the same, therefore we do not see any changes occurring. But that does not mean that there is no reaction occurring at equilibrium. True or false, the rate of forward reaction is the same as a reverse reaction or backwards reaction at equilibrium. Okay, and so it is true. That's the definition of equilibrium actually. At equilibrium, there's no further changes to the concentration of reactants or products. Answer is uh, true again, because forward and backward reaction, they are the same rate, therefore, um, the amount that is being consumed is the same as the amount that is being produced. Therefore, there's no further changes to their concentrations. Now, is the concentration of reactants equals to the concentration of products at equilibrium? The answer is false. Okay, it could be equals to each other, it could be uh, totally different. Now look at the examples that we've been doing. Now, do you see any of them having the same re um, concentration between the reactant and product? But they have reached equilibrium because you can see that there's no more changes in their concentration. So therefore, it is possible for the concentration of reactants do not be equal to the concentration of products at equilibrium. So for the next lesson, um, I will talk to you more about the factors affecting the equilibrium position. Okay, thank you class.